Obsessed with scary movies, Brian Draper and Tori Adamchik took their dark obsession to the next level. Uh, I mean, it went by so fast. Shut the up, we gotta get our act straight. Okay. Brian was the new shy kid at school when he met Tori. The two quickly bonded and started hanging out, fantasizing about making a movie together. After all, Brian had a video camera. They even started writing a movie script. They were most inspired by the 90s slasher movie, Scream. Everybody, the suspect! Scream. Consumed by the idea that they lived in a horror movie, they wrote up a kill list, including classmates they planned to make their victims. We're skipping the next fourth hour. We're not even planning right now. At the top of their list was one specific friend, 16-year-old Casey Joe Stoddard. I'm sorry, Cassie's family, but she had to number one. We have to stick with the plan. She's gonna die. <laughs> they began to film Casey at school, plotting out their attack. Hey, look, I don't know. Hello, Cassie. <laughs> I'm getting you on tape, okay? Say hi, please. Hi. Okay, see ya. They soon found out that she'd be spending a weekend house sitting for her aunt and uncle. Our first victim is going to be Cassie Stoddard. She's gonna be alone in a big, dark house out in the middle of nowhere. How perfect can you get? Everything was lining up. Cassie and her boyfriend, Matt, invited Brian and Tori over for a movie. Before the movie ended, Brian and Torin left, saying that they were bored and going to a local theater instead. But secretly, they planned to return. We know there's lots of doors. There, there's lots of places to hide. I locked the back doors. That's all I locked. Now we just gotta wait. Brian and Torin snuck back into the basement wearing dark clothes, gloves, and painted masks. Matt and Cassie heard a loud noise. It was coming from the basement. The noise repeated. Suddenly, the power went out. Frightened by noises, Matt invited Cassie to stay at his house instead. The girl shook her head. She agreed to watch the house and wasn't going to break her promise. Matt's mom arrived to pick him up, and as soon as they heard him leave, Brian and Torin headed upstairs. Cassie's night was about to become a real-life horror film. The two masked boys brutally attacked her with a dagger and a hunting knife that they bought at a pawn shop. The victim suffered a total of 30 stab wounds. 12 of them were potentially fatal. Fleeing the bloody scene, the two movie fans couldn't have been more thrilled. I just killed Cassie. We just left her house. This is not a joke. I'm shaking. I stabbed her in the throat and I saw her lifeless body just disappear. When Cassie's dead body was discovered, detectives investigated all leads. The police summoned Matt Beckham for interrogation. The grief-stricken youth told the investigators that they weren't alone that night. Brian Draper and Tori Adamchik were questioned right after him. Their movie theater alibi was quickly proven to be fake. The police saw through the flimsy facade right away and started pressing Brian to confess. He completely folded. In an attempt to earn more points for himself, Brian led the police to Black Rock Canyon, where he and Tori buried the evidence. The boys attempted to burn everything, but their chilling video footage was recovered. We found our victim and sad as it may be, She's our friend, but you know what? We all have to make sacrifices. Brian told police that Torin forced him to commit the crime. In his words, it was Tori who killed Cassie Stoddart. He said he only intended to scare her. If I could go back in time and say, hey, it's us, Cassie, it's us. We're, we're, we're just joking around, it's us. I would do anything for that. Despite these claims, both the young men faced serious consequences. The next summer, Brian Draper and Tori Adamchik had been convicted of first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, and they had been sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. As an adult, Brian hopes that his story will help prevent other teens from committing acts of violence. For all the kids out there who are thinking about that stuff now, it's not too late. When you go to prison, you lose your entire life, you lose everything. Do you think these boys deserve a second chance? Should Hollywood be held responsible for creating killers?